Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine is moving to a new health education campus in the summer of 2019. As plans for the new building got underway, we were informed that there would be no wet labs in the new building. As director of the anatomy program at the medical school, I found this information to be quite distressing. My colleagues and I saw this as a tremendous threat. Cadaveric dissection has been at the forefront of anatomy education in medical schools since, for generations. But after asking some really difficult questions like, how can you teach a human body without a human body, we decided to consider our position to be an opportunity instead of a threat. We started looking into solutions. We looked at computer-based programs, virtual reality, 3D printing, plastination. Some potential solutions were just too expensive. Others didn't meet our requirements for ease of use, either by instructors or by students. Some programs were inaccurate. Some lacked the detail that we needed. Many were two-dimensional. We knew that we needed to think outside the box, blow everything up and start again. We needed to bring anatomy to life. And with that, we asked, how do we need to teach anatomy in the 21st century? Why does anatomy have to be dead in the 21st century? How do our students use anatomy in their clinical clerkships and in, as residents and, of course, as practicing physicians? Gradually, we began to imagine a new living anatomy curriculum. Putting cadaveric dissection aside, not away, we realized that our course should include ultrasound and some physical exam skills on living, healthy patients, and, of course, radiology, as they talked about this morning, as Rishi talked about, skills they need as practicing physicians. But try as we might, we could not give up on cadaveric dissection completely. We believe that it would be a mistake to just throw the baby out with the bathwater, because the interaction with the cadaver has value beyond learning anatomy, both intangible and tangible value. The intangibles include, for example, the experience that every physician ex has as a rite of passage into the world of medical practitioners. Cadaveric dissection is also many medical students' first foray into the doctor-patient relationship. For some, it's their first exposure to death, which in the lab we can manage in a controlled setting. Also, cadaveric dissection provides an opportunity to demystify both the human body and death. The tangibles are easier to identify. For example, employing haptic percep perception for recognizing and identifying anatomical relationships. Also, learning to decipher anatomical variation. We always tell our students, just like you look different on the outside, you look different on the inside. And so learning anatomical variation and anatomical relationships. We decided to modify our format. Early in a student's first year, as our anatomy curriculum gets underway, we will have a two-week dissection boot camp in our current School of Medicine building. And then after the boot camp, our students, students will transition back to our new health education campus for a living anatomy curriculum with the remainder, which, sorry, which will be integrated with the remainder of their general medical education. Based on the theoretical framework for, um, developed by Jerome Bruner way back in the 1960s, known as the spiral curriculum, our students will use the basic knowledge that they acquire at the boot camp for learning more complex obje uh, learning objectives the second time around. So during a single anatomy session at our new health education campus, students will rotate, th rotate sorry, through three rooms or stations while focusing on a single anatomical theme. In our radiology reading room, pairs of students will scroll through relevant images to learn to interpret them. They'll focus on normal anatomy and the tests that they'll need to order um, as, again, as clerks, as residents, and of course, as physicians, that are related to the day's anatomical themes. In our physical exam and um, ultrasound classroom, groups of four students will examine young, healthy models, 
um, again, using physical exam skills and ultrasound to explore the normal anatomy associated with our day's theme. And finally, in our virtual dissection lab, students will use the Microsoft HoloLens technology that we're currently developing to review the anatomy associated with the day's theme. We have deemed this hollow anatomy. Microsoft HoloLens is a wearable Windows 10 computer that provides augmented reality technology. Let's take a look at what it can do. The HoloLens is absolutely the most amazing piece of technology. Within five seconds, I realized that the world had changed. It was an immediate realization that this is something exciting and we have to be a part of this. I'm sorry, this is the wrong video. Seeing things and in 3D is working. something that you could do before with some glasses. Speaking of technology, sorry, we have to take a step back to the 20th century for one minute to switch to a different video and make it work and then we'll go back into the 21st century. The digital content is inserted into the room as if it's actually there. As a teacher, I can see what they're all looking at, and that's something that we think has real... Could we start it over? It's a really nice video. Mm -hmm. Hmm? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Yeah. Two of my children came to see me do this, and they just walked in, and now they're seeing the glitch. <laughs> and they're laughing at me. How are we doing? While we wait for them to get the video, I'm just curious. Uh, the, the Microsoft Case Western uh, relationship is very unique. Uh, it's been ongoing. So tell us a little bit about how that evolved, if you could just speak, say something very brief about it while they're looking for the video. Well, it evolved way over my pay grade. Okay. But um, uh, we... A lot of NDAs were involved, but go ahead, please. <laughs> so we're in partnership. Our, our medical, new medical education building is going to be on the campus of the Cleveland Clinic. And mm -hmm. actually, it began with an interaction between the president of the Cleveland Clinic and somebody very high up in Microsoft. Very good. Probably Balmer at the time. Who I'm knows? not sure. How are we doing? You want to ask another question? <laughs> well, what would Neil Mehta tell you to do in this case? Neil Mehta is their, one of their directors of instructional technology. He would tell me not to sweat the small stuff. So what I'm going to do yeah. is tell you that there's a really cool, cool video, and it will, it will show up. Can I, can I continue? The PowerPoint? Yeah. The PowerPoint, PowerPoint in the meantime? The show must go on? OK, I yeah, really want to yeah, show my videos, though, so I hope we can. But let's see where we're at now. Oh, OK. Oh, no, that's not where we're at. Can you, can you back up? Let's see. Oh, all my secrets are being shown now. Oh, I see. So you know what? Let's try this. I'm going to proceed. And then actually, because the videos, this is the first video anyhow, I think. So let's try it and see if that works. No. OK. So that's not working. I think we're going to oh. have to wait. Here it is. Lens is absolutely the most amazing piece of technology. Within five seconds, I realized that the world had changed. It was an immediate realization that this is something exciting and we have to be a part of this. Seeing things in 3D is something that you could do before with some glasses. The thing that the HoloLens gives you is the ability to walk around those 3D objects and to really experience them as if they're in the room with you. It is augmented reality, it is mixed reality. And what that means is I still see you, I still see this room and everything around me but the digital content is inserted into the room as if it's actually there. As a teacher, I can see what they're all looking at, and that's something that we think has real power. It's actually opening up our interactions with each other. The biggest drive is getting the anatomy curriculum completely done by the time we move into the new health education campus. Today, 
We and the Cleveland Clinic are constructing a state of the future health education campus. Our students will learn using the most forward-looking educational programs. HoloLens is a key part of this. The actual act of dissection hasn't changed in generations. We have to be much, much more effective and efficient. The biggest thing about medical school is there's just so much information and so much knowledge you're being asked to learn. HoloLens is going to enable us to teach in an integrated way and to look at the body in ways they haven't been able to see it. It's sort of having x-ray vision, seeing through the skin. My mind was just kind of blown. When I tried it on, it was perfect. It's really hard to understand what the anatomy and book's trying to tell you. So with the HoloLens, we can literally show you what's happening with the body. We can look at how the heart moves, or look at how the brain processes information and how information flows around in our brain. They can see when the heart valves are closing and hear the sounds. How the diaphragm moves, when the lungs move. A click of the fingers is gonna allow students to see how everything's interconnected in the body. We have means to draw people's attention to things to get them where they need to look. Do you want to look and then pull the bones out? What they really crave is learning anatomy in the context of what they need to know clinically. What are they going to need to know for their clerkships and their future careers? With HoloLens, we can have essentially any disease that you want to see. So when I see an image like this in the hospital, I know exactly what's going on. This is how to treat and diagnose them. The HoloLens provides like a new way of teaching anatomy. It can really speed up the process of learning this material. I think HoloLens is the next big transformative change in medical education. As we proceeded, we realized that we couldn't simply upload structures from imaging modalities onto the HoloLens, because at the end of the day, the HoloLens is a computer that you wear on your head, and it can't handle the complexity that th these images contain. We also discovered that open source materials were not detailed enough for medical students. So what we had to do was we had to work with our artists to create the assets from scratch. And not only did our artists need to develop our assets, our developers had to create tools to assemble lesson plans. But before delving too deeply into the content, we had to answer some more fundamental questions like, will the hardware work? Will the system crash in a classroom setting? Will the HoloLens need to be recharged in the middle of a lesson? So in September, we beta tested this technology with a hollow anatomy, hollow anatomy lesson to a group of about 40 students. I'd like to share a bit of that experience with you now. Is that better? Go start the anatomy course app, you click join session. Go start the anatomy course app, you click join session. You all see that you have models in front of you. All of us on the outside without HoloLenses just see you guys walking around in a room. <laughs> so can everybody go to the, to the posterior side of your model? So 100% of you walked around him. You already believe that this guy's here. So let's take it to the next level. I'm going to look with you at some of the musculoskeletal elements of the chest or the thoracic wall. If we look at the vertebral body and follow it posteriorly, you should see a small arch. Partial ribs are sometimes called floating ribs because they don't go all the way around. It's something easier to get the big picture right away because I think you can see it all at once. So already we're seeing that we're developing a sort of x-ray type of vision, which is really exciting, isn't it? And I could come up from underneath and see like what the top of the diaphragm looks like compared to the bottom and what passes through where. And we're going to focus now on the aorta. And you can see the aorta is a candy cane type structure. In the aorta, we were in lab this week and we were trying to like figure out how the aorta is like positioned and where the branches come off. And here it was just so easy to see because we could peel away everything else. Now we've added on the vascular tree. You even see like the pulmonary arteries in the back, like the branches. Oh wow. I thought it was amazing. Like all these minor details that you kind of miss in cadaver lab. But here you have everything that's laid out to you and it's spatial relationships with all the skeletal structures too. It was phenomenal. Because in the real cadaver, a lot of structures are kind of hidden. 
so you can't really see them or find them even. And here you can actually see the relationship between the structures and the really, really tiny structures especially. Those are really helpful. I felt like it was actually a really good group dynamic that I wasn't expecting to be able to have with this. And I could see everybody and then it was really overlay and onto the reality. So that was really amazing. You know, I thought it'd be cool to see the HoloLens in action, but I didn't expect it to actually be as educational as it was. And I feel like I'm kind of pumped to go One study five. and kind of solidify those details. What began as a technical trial turned into a lesson that lasted over an hour. Despite the rudimentary an anatomy that, was, had been be that had been taught, about 87.5% of the students said they had learned something new about human anatomy, and 100% of them said they were interested in participating in a future HoloLens class. And for us to get 100% out of our students in anything is pretty unusual. In addition, all but one student agreed that they could maintain interpersonal or small group contact while wearing the HoloLens. In contrast, though, about 23% of the students felt that the HoloLens was uncomfortable. They didn't like having it on their heads. And many commented that they missed the haptic or tactile feedback, as well as the anatomical variation that they could see on a cadaver. In December, we have invited a group of faculty and interested medical students and graduate students to a hollow neuroanatomy lesson. In this um, lesson, we experimented with different formats. Here you see the group standing around a 30-foot brain, spinal cord, and vertebral column. Uh, it's very unusual, by the way, for students to have an opportunity to see the brain and spinal cord in continuity. And then we also looked at small group formats. So here you see the students looking at um, holo holograms of the um, subarachnoid space. Um, and there are anatomical features that, you can, that we can create on HoloLens that you can't see on the cadaver, which is sort of cool. And one of the things I love is the look on this particular young woman's face. She's a second-year medical student who um, had, was just, at this time, was just completing a course in neuroanatomy. And you can see she is just thrilled. In order to understand the sequelae of lesions of the nervous system, we teach students the trajectory of a large number of neurological pathways. Until now, we have been using very primitive modalities in order to teach these tracks or pathways, like having students thread yarn through a series of photographs of sections of the spinal cord, brainstem, and forebrain. So just threading yarn up. In our neuro hollow anatomy lesson, we presented some material concerning the trajectory of two ascending tracks and one descending tracks. And you can imagine the difference in effect between this method and the yarn and photograph method. Here you see, again, looking at the format, groups, small groups of students standing around holograms. Um, and on the left, you see a group looking at a section of the spinal cord with its blood supply, while on the right, they're viewing a cross-section of the cord, illustrating the area involved in anterior spinal artery syndrome, um, a very common form of spinal cord infarction. We gave the group of medical students, and there were 11 of them, pre- and post-quizzes to see if they had learned anything. So six of the students had taken the graduate neuroanatomy course before this event, and um, to the dismay of their instructor, 80, uh, the average score for the kids who had taken um, the graduate course was uh, only 81% on the pre-hollow neuroanatomy lesson, and on the post, it was 97%. For, there were five students who hadn't taken neurological anatomy before. Their pre-test average score was 57%, and their post-test was 80%. So, as we move into the fall of 2017, we're on schedule to begin more formal testing of our hollow anatomy curriculum. The first of these tests will involve taking a small set of second-year medical students who will be studying limbs and back, and using the HoloLens as a primary teaching modality. We will also, in a couple of different formats, pilot hollow anatomy on thorax, abdomen, and pelvis perineum with our first-year students. Thanks.
Well, Suzanne, that was a wonderful uh, 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 you know, presentation, and, and I appreciate your poise through uh, some of our uh, you know, multimedia glitches. Um, so much has been made of uh, uh, the Microsoft HoloLens device, uh, which obviously a little bit of the star here, obviously about teaching, but there's obviously some interesting tech involved. Uh, when the prototypes first came out, uh, it had what was considered a wider field of vision. So for the eyes, the field of vision is just how much you can see you know, of the augmented reality that's being projected on the world around you. But when the second generation came out, it was smaller, so it's the equivalent of about uh, I think a 17 inch monitor or about a foot and a half in front of your space. So if you glance off the side, you might lose some. So tell me, if, did that have any impact at all on, on, the, um, on, on, on the experience of the students? So bear in mind that they only experienced the one, the one. We, we didn't have a before and after with that. We ah. only used, we only had the narrower gotcha. um, view. I think it would be easier to use and even better if we had the wider visual field, but we don't. Gotcha. Um, and, you know, you sort of manage with what you have. I think that in general, we're enjoying the benefits of HoloLens. Um, I think, I, you know, so while it would be nicer the other way, we still, you know, you could still, we can still teach mm -hmm. and learn using the device. Very good. Uh, questions from the audience? Yes, uh, yes. Silber. So I mentioned, we are, we are also, right now, we have a strictly cadaver-based, cada cadaveric dissection-based anatomy course. We are bringing in ultrasound and physical diagnosis into our course, as well as, um, well, we do, I do partner with a radiologist, and we do have radiology, but we're going to have a much more um, um, sort of integrated radiology, ultrasound, anatomy course going than what we have now. So the answer is ultrasound, physical diagnosis, and a better integration of radiology. Go ahead. Hi. Please identify yourself. Sebastian Kuhn, um, surgeon and educator. Um, first of all, congratulations. I think it's an amazing project, and we're going to be interested to hear about uh, the upcoming month about the progress. <coughs> when you look two to three years into the future, where do you see that project? Is it kind of like one of the trademarks for your university? Was it something you want to distribute among the medical community in general? I think we would love to dis distribute it. I think um, if, it, if it works, if we succeed, um, and I hope we do, um, I think it, it seems, you know, even if we're just listening to what people talked about, you know, during the past day and a half, people talk about skills, people talk about integration, you know. I think that this we are really moving toward this. I mean, I really think of it as a living anatomy curriculum. And to be honest, as an anatomy professor and as a person with a PhD in anatomy, it's really threatening in the beginning to move into this realm because we're really out of our comfort zone. But this is where we have to go. Any other questions? In the back, please. Siri, uh, not Siri, Cortana, sorry, wrong device. Cortana, it's the... Oh, you mean, are you, how did they actually get the pictures where you can actually see the, uh, the whole, th there's special equipment uh, that is also basically, there's a hollow lens on a camera, so they're basically taking pictures of whatever is being projected in the, in the glass, so, so they have a direct input. Yeah, it's special equipment that no. Microsoft provided, Case yeah. Western. I'm dying to know the answer to that. Okay, other, qu qu yes, please identify. Yeah, I did want to say something totally different in response to your question. Sometimes it flashes that when, we, when you're wearing the HoloLens, there are these flashes. And I was thinking that something like that could be dangerous for someone you with epilepsy. You could trigger an epilepsy. Yeah. Uh, okay. It, that, just, that has crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. um, on a totally different note, no, the answer is no to your question. Just, 
It's just very early on. Right, or perhaps like uh, you know, uh, we we've, we've all seen that um, those those movies where the guy gets uh, you know, you know, miniaturized, right? Uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and you could potentially be in a blood vessel and so. Because I noticed that you actually expanded that spinal cord column to thirty feet, right? Who has a thirty foot spinal column model in their medical school, right? Right. I mean, uh, can you address that, I and mean, you can potentially put pathology in that. Oh like yeah. Osteoarthritis oh, or whatever. We we will we will we hope to. Okay, very we good. definitely hope to. I mean, the whole idea of magic school bus is okay. definitely. Uh, we have one, 10 seconds for one more question. In the, in the, in the new building, is there um, plans for there to be multidisciplinary education? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's um, medical, PA, dental, and nursing. We have a social work school too, but they have a new building. Will their education be integrated? Some of it, yeah. Absolutely, yes. All right. Please thank me. In, I'm sorry. Please join me in thanking <laughs> Suzanne. <laughs> thank you so much. Please thank you for getting through all this. <laughs>